Great scenes from great plays. Tonight, starring Ingrid Bergman and Brian Ahern in A Doll's House by Henry Gibson. On behalf of the families of the Protestant Episcopal Church in your community and the Episcopal Actors Guild, welcome to a transcribed radio version of the world-famous Ibsen play, A Doll's House, adapted by James Hart. In it, we are privileged to present Miss Ingrid Bergman as Nora and as Torvald, the distinguished actor, Mr. Brian Ahern. Now, here's your host, the celebrated actor-manager, Mr. Walter Hamden. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play is one of the enduring classics of dramatic literature. Though written 70-odd years ago, its theme has never been more fresh and vital than it is today. is in the 1870s, a time when almost all rights, personal and political, were vested in the male, and the female had to conform in order to hold a precarious place in a world which she had only an indirect part in shaping. The action is in Oslo, Norway. The scene, a living room of a comfortable apartment. Adjoining is a study, private domain of the man of the house, Torvald Helmer, who's just been appointed manager of a bank, his actual assumption of the post being now only a matter of days. As always, when the study is occupied, its door is tightly shut. Torvald? Torvald, dear? This is Nora Helmer. For eight years, a devoted wife, typical of her day, when a man accepted a woman's love as nothing more than his due, and she took his as nothing less than an article of faith in the marriage institution. But Nora has made her marriage work, and she's the mother of three fine children. It's Christmas Eve, mid-afternoon. Not you me to disturb you, Torva, but could you come into the living room one minute? Well, little squirrel, feel mm. like chattering a bit? Something so important it can't wait. Oh, yes, yes, it's <laughs> terribly important. I want you... Making the money fly, eh? Mm. Well, well, it's Christmas Eve. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, I had no idea. This is Mrs. Is. Linden, Torva, dear. Christina, you've heard me speak of her. Oh, yes, yes. An old school friend of my wife's, I believe. Yes, we've known each other since we were girls. And only think, Christina's come all the way from Bergen just to see you, Torva. She's wonderfully clever at accounts and thought if she could work under a really first-class businessman, someone like you, well, she could learn so much more. Mm, very interesting, I'm sure. So when she read you'd been appointed manager at the bank, she dropped everything. I and thought perhaps you might be considering some personnel changes, Mr. Helmer. Oh, so I am. Oh, nothing very sweeping, mind you, but uh, here and there, a defective cog replaced in the machine. I, uh, I have in mind one man in particular. And Christina may have his place, or tall oh, Slowly, slowly, little Nora. I uh, take it, Mrs. Linden, you've had experience in office work, uh, more particularly in accounting? Quite a few years of it since my husband's death. Excellent. Well, then I see no reason why we can't come to some uh, mutually satisfactory arrangement. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Helmer, how can I thank oh, you? Oh, no occasion. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go back to my study and my work. Uh, good day, Mrs. Linden. I shall expect you at the bank then, the day after New Year. The day after New Year's. And thank you again, Mr. Helmer. Goodbye, little Nora Bird. I shan't be too long. Goodbye, goodbye, Torva, dear, and thank you, thank you. Oh, Christina, isn't he a dear? You're very lucky, Nora. <laughs> this sounds like the perfect man. Oh, it is. And after next week, life will be even more perfect. Why would this advancement for Torva like the bank? We'll be able to do as we please. Not just 
and not uh, money enough for what we need. But heaps and heaps. Oh, oh Nora, no, Nora. No. <laughs> Haven't you grown up at all? In our school days, you were a shocking little spendthrift. Oh, Torvald <laughs> says I am still. <laughs> but, but there are things even he doesn't know about me. Why, no? Suddenly you're so serious. And does that surprise you so much? But I can be serious. Well, darling, it would only be such a change. Seven years ago, something happened that made me change inside. And ever since, I've been forced to hide it. Well, whatever are you talking about? Christina, Christina, you are my oldest friend. If I were to tell you the secret that's been locked in me, would you promise never under any circumstances to repeat it? Whatever it is, you know it's safe with me. Well, seven years ago, Torvald was taken deathly ill, and the doctor said the only way to save his life was to take him to Italy for a year of sunshine and mild climate. I still have the postal card you sent me. Have you ever wondered where we got the money for that year in the South? You, you must have known that Torvald was just starting out in business and couldn't afford it. Well, I, uh, I assumed you got it from your father. Oh, that's what Torvald thinks. But we needed 5,000 kronen. And father was actually dying at the time, and I couldn't bear to trouble him. And besides, he didn't have it. Well, then where? Christina, I borrowed the money. But you couldn't. A wife can't borrow without her husband's consent. That's the law. Oh, what did I care for the law? My husband's life was in danger, and that's all that mattered. I found a way. I got the money. And all these years you've been repaying? Mm -hmm. How? Addressing envelopes? Well, Tora was at the office during the day, sewing far into the night for pay, telling him it was new frocks for myself I was making. Oh, my poor Nora. And you never told him? Mm. No. Nor ever shall. Nor begrudge a single minute of the time and effort I devoted to it. Now, you see, Christine, it's been a wonderful, blessed thing for me. In it, I've actually been becoming a person to myself by doing something for the man I love without his even knowing it. And now there's just another effort to please him. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Helmer, ma'am, but there's somebody to see. Oh, Ellen, can't you see I'm engaged? No, I really must be getting back to my own no, no, nonsense. You'll do nothing of the sort. It's Mr. Krugs, that right, ma'am. Oh, oh the, tell him, that is, ask him if he'll be kind enough to wait for a few minutes. Yes. Krugstad. Oh. Not Nils Krugstad. You know him, Christina? Well, yes. Once I knew him very well. But poor Niels. I understand things haven't gone very well for him. Oh, one hears talk. Originally, it was some sort of financial disgrace, I believe. Oh, but Nora, why should Krogstad be coming? coming to see me? My dear, I scarcely know him. I haven't the least idea. <laughs> well, what is it you want here, Mr. Krogstad? It's not the, not the first of the month yet. Today, Mrs. Elmer, I'm here on another matter. Uh, was that uh, Mrs. Linden who passed me in the hall? Yes, but I failed to see... I was acquainted with her once. Yes, you, know. you mentioned something of the sort. Mrs. Helmer, is Mrs. Linden to have a post with the bank? Oh, really, Mr. Crockstead? What possible interest could that be to you? I hold a small place there myself. Very well, since you ask, yes, Mrs. Linden is to be employed. And it was I who recommended her. I thought as much. Now, I should like you to use your influence for me to see that I retain my small position. Oh, but but I, I couldn't. I haven't the power. I, I... you haven't the will. I wonder if you've heard, though it never came into court, that I uh, got into trouble some years ago. What, what, what's that got to do with this thing you're asking me? I must have respectability for the sake of my sons who are growing up. My little post at the bank represents that respectability. I shall stop at nothing to hold that post. Do you understand? I shall stop at nothing. Oh, oh you, you wouldn't tell my husband I owe you money? No, no, that he should learn my secret in such an ugly way. That, Mrs. Helmer, is completely in your hands. Very well, tell him, just tell him. He'll pay you off at once, and then, then where do you think your precious post at the bank will be? Mrs. Helmer. It seems I must make the position clear. Seven years ago, when your husband was ill, you came to me for 5,000 kronen. I gave it to you after preparing a note for your signature. Is that right? Yes, I signed a note. But I added a few lines, making your father also a security. And he was to sign. Was to? 
He did, Spike. Your father was quite ill at the time, I believe. Yes, he was dying. And do you happen to recollect the date of his death? Father died on the 29th of September. Quite correct. I made inquiries. Now, here's the note. Perhaps you'd like to look at it with me and explain a remarkable point about it. Remarkable point? What remarkable point? The remarkable point, madam, that from the date of this signature, your father appears to have signed this note three days after his death. But why are you so silent? It was really your father who wrote his name here, wasn't it? No. I wrote it. My husband's life was in danger. It was nothing more and nothing worse, Mrs. Helmer, that made me an outcast from society. Now then, I'll give you three days to save my post at the bank for me. No. If by that time you haven't acted, I will. Well, what will you do if I... If I cannot... I shall lay this document before a court of law. And you understand, do you? This won't just bring disgrace on you, but on your husband and your children. Poor well, dear. If I were in trouble or in danger, could I count on you to stand by me? Oh, oh. Why, what a question, don't, little don't squirrel. Laugh. Don't laugh. Answer me. Could I? You know you could. Have I ever failed you? Count on me to spare you pain and hurt because I could never bear to see you anything but my darling, happy Nora. Oh. Thank you, my dearest. I had to know. No, oh, but come now. Such somber talk. And this is Christmas Eve. It's a mood. Oh, surely not one for Christmas. Think. Tonight and tomorrow, it's the children and the Christmas mm -hmm. tree. And then the night after, Consul Stenborg's party. And my little girl is to dance at Tarandella. Oh, must I go through with it? Why, Nora, you're not in earnest. You know how much it means to me and my career for you to shine at Stenborg's party. Yes, yes, forgive me. You finished all your work in the study? Yes, now I wanted to step out and post this envelope. And then my day's work it's is over. Torvald, if I... If I were to ask you to do something, would you do it? Just because I asked you. Well, well, now, that all depends. <laughs> Sometimes my little songbird can be very, very foolish. <laughs> but what is this thing you want so much? For, for you to let Krogstad keep his place at the bank. Will you do that for me, Torvald? Krogstad? Yes. I had no idea you even knew him. As a matter of fact, it was his place that I gave to Mrs. Linda. Oh, no. Yes, yes, oh, and that you're imploring. You... Yes, but, but instead of Krogs, that couldn't you dismiss some other clerk to make room for Christina? You know what you're asking. You're asking me to keep on at my bank a man who was once guilty of forgery. May he not have been driven to it by need? Perhaps. And I'm not so heartless as to condemn a man for the rest of his life for a single misdeed. Not if he owns up to it and takes his punishment. Oh, but he must own up. That's the first step towards retrieving his character. And Krogs, that? Krogs, that is still corrupt. Why, think of the poison he breathes right now, contaminating his own home, and particularly his children. But, Torvald, isn't that terribly harsh? Only realistic. I've seen it often. Children debased by unfit, unregenerated parents, and more often than not, by a lying, hypocritical mother. You believe these things deep inside of you? They are your unshakable convictions? Yes, Nora. Krugstadt is forever ruined morally. And I could never keep him on at the bank, oh. regardless of my no. promise to Mrs. Oh, Linda. Oh, I'll reconsider. I beg of you. Yeah, kind-hearted Nora. Oh, let's stop all this. I'm going out to post my envelope. In it is Krogstad's notice of dismissal. Oh. You're over to the worry, oh. though. He won't get it till after Christmas. Mrs. Helmer, it's not good form to pay unannounced calls the day after Christmas, but surely you must have been expecting me. I thought for you, Mr. Krogstad, but it was no use. Your husband knew what I could bring on you, and still he cared so little. You don't think I told him? No. I felt quite certain you wouldn't. However, I've come to tell you, I won't lodge any legal complaint. Not for the present, at least. What do you mean? I have in my pocket a letter for your husband. How much is your demand to tear it up? I make no demand of money, Mrs. Helmer. 
no demands at all on you. Then what? I demand a higher place in the bank than the one from which I've been dismissed. Your husband shall create such a place for oh, me. Oh, you're mad. He'd never do that. No. He's helpless to refuse it. But if I were no longer here? Under the ice, perhaps? Down in the cold, black water? I'd still have your note and your husband in my pocket. Oh, Mrs. Helmer, I take no pleasure in watching your distress. Therefore, I shall leave you. It's your husband himself who's forced me to this. For that, I'll never forgive him. But, the letter? But, no, I haven't forgotten it. On my way out, I shall drop it in your husband's mailbox. Oh. It'll be there, waiting for him to find it. <laughs> Christina, it's good of you to have come. Never have I needed a friend as I do tonight. Try to put it out of your mind. You'll only call attention to yourself by brooding if anything should happen. So I can't be here when Torva learns of this whole Krugstad business. Now stop it this instant. You're quite beside yourself, and it's almost time for you to go up the stairs to the party. You'll bear witness, won't you, that I did the whole thing alone. You understand what I'm saying? No, I don't understand. No. And if you ask me, no, you understand. It's all part of the sign. The miracle. What? Sign. What miracle? The miracle of our love. The sign that Torvald will give when he steps forward and takes my guilt upon himself. But, Christina, much as that sign means to me, I shall never, never let it happen. Nora. Nora, listen to me. I'll go to Grostad the moment you've left to go upstairs to the park. Once he would have done anything. Oh, it's, it's no use. The letter's in the mailbox now. In the mailbox, no? And your husband carries the only key? It's always. Well, then Niels must demand his letter back. Unread. Make some excuse. Oh, but oh, Torvald may open the box any second. Prevent him. Keep him occupied till the party starts. How? How can I... Do... Who's that? Hello, you're Torvald, dearest. Oh, at last I'm allowed back in my living room. <laughs> well, what's your report on her, Mrs. Linden? Look at her. Isn't she lovely in her costume? Oh, beautiful. But, Nora, dear, something wrong? You haven't worn yourself out practicing your tarantella, have you? Well, I need your help. Will you give me some coaching? Well, all the pleasure in life. Uh, just a moment, though. I shan't be gone. Oh, Torvald, where are you going? Well, there's a mailbox to no. see if there are any Tor letters. Torvald, don't! Yeah. What's wrong, Nora? Oh, Torvald, I'm so nervous dancing before all those people. I can't seem to remember the figures, not even how to begin. Look, I'll show you. Please play for me. Say, it, it starts like this. No, 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 that's wrong. And didn't I tell you? Oh, but you're starting much too fast. More slowly, Nora. Oh, do you hear? Slower, slower. No, 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 I say, not so violently. I must. Stop it, stop it. This is the merest mess. You see... Oh, I have forgotten everything. And you must practice with me right up to the minute we go upstairs to the party. Not a stroke of work. You won't even go to the mailbox. Promise me, Torvald. Promise me you won't even leave me to go to the mailbox. What sort of idiocy is this? Oh, very well, very well. The child shall have her way, I promise. But later, when the party's over... Then, then, Torvald, you will be free. <laughs> You understand, then, Ellen, what you're to tell Mrs. Helmer? I think so, Mrs. Linden, Mum. That I've been to see the gentleman we spoke of. And if he's given me his word, he'll withdraw his demand. And won't cause either Mr. or Mrs. Helmer any further trouble. The gentleman will withdraw his demand and won't cause them any further trouble. That's right. And you tell Mrs. Helmer the minute she comes in. Yes, ma'am, Mrs. Linden. Only I don't know what time they'll come in. Listen, they're still upstairs dancing. No, 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 no. I want to go back upstairs to the party. The music is still playing. Come, come, Nora. No more of this display. Now, now, sit down here while I go out to the mail. No. Try to compose yourself. I shan't be a moment. Cold, black water. He has the letter now. 
Please open this. Nora! Do you know about this? Do you know what's in this letter? Yes, Tora. And now you know how much I've given to our love. Oh, I've dreaded this moment, and yet I've longed for it. What are you talking about? Now I have one more thing to give, so you must let me go. Go? Go where? Please, Thorvald. I shan't allow you to save me. I shan't... You shan't take my guilt upon oh, yourself. Stop it. This is no time for play-acting. Thorvald. You stay right here and give an account of yourself. But this tone you're taking... Oh, no. Oh, yes. We'll have no more of your childish evasions. Do you realize what you've done to me? Destroyed my happiness and threatened my career? Put me in the hands of a scoundrel who can demand anything he wants of me? Do you understand? Answer me! Understand? Yes, now I begin to understand fully. Good. And now you and I must come to an understanding. We must indeed. There'll be no scandal. You can go on living here as you have. That is officially. But the children... The children... Yes, what of them? I dare not trust them, do you? They've already been exposed too long to the poison of deception. A letter for you, ma'am. Mr. Krogstad just left it at the door. Krogstad? Give that letter to me, Helen. Oh, it's all right, Helen. Do us, Mr. F. Tell me told you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good night, Mrs. Helen. Nora. Nora, this other letter. Uh, this letter that Helen just brought. I, I, I'm saved. And I... What does Krogstad say in his letter? Oh, what difference does it make? Uh, there's something about being grateful to you for bringing Mrs. Linden and him together. But, but look, look, look what he sent. The promissory note. Oh, oh, little Nora, let me take you in my no. arms. I... Stay where you are, Tom. Better still sit down. I have a great deal to say to you. But Nora, no, you haven't heard. Stay well, seated, I... Nora. There, thank you. Now as we sit here, doesn't something strike you? Strike me? What should strike me? That we've been married eight years and this is the first time we've sat down, you and I, man and wife, to talk seriously together. Oh, surely you're not going to hold the things I said while, while I was out of my mind with anxiety against me? It's not just what happened tonight. It's been going on ever since I was a child. My father used to call me his doll child and play with me. As I played with my dolls, then I came here. You haven't been happy here? I thought so, but I never was. Only Mary. Here I've been your doll wife. Oh, then I'll change that. I'll make it different. You'll make it different. There it is. I must do that. And until I do, I shan't be a fit wife for you or a proper mother for our children. That's why I must leave you. Leave me? Nora, do you know what you're saying? Walk out on, on your holiest duties? I have my duties to myself. And they are equally holy. And just when did you become aware that these duties to yourself were enough to make you leave your husband? Just now, a few minutes ago, when you didn't give the sign of miracle. Miracle? What miracle? The miracle that I believed was our love. The sign was to be your defying Krogstad, daring him to make known to all the secrets he was trying to use against us. Is that man giving you my, my wife up to shame and disgrace? The rest I thought would follow naturally. You would step forward and take all my blame upon yourself. Swear that you were guilty. No, you... hear me out. That very thought in your mind would have been the sign. The deed itself I did not intend ever to happen. I meant to take my life before you could put the thought into action. But Nora, no man sacrifices his honor. Even for the one he loves. Millions of women have done so. I apparently among them. But was I right or was I wrong? Shall I find the answer in this house? From a husband whose deepest concern always has been that I should not let seriousness mar the comedy of the performance. Perhaps you're just. But you needn't be cruel. Is there no hope for the future? Hope? Yes, but that must be in the miracle of miracles. And that... When both you and I have changed, so that... Oh, Torvald. Tonight has not been an easy night to keep one's faith in signs and miracles. And I'll have faith enough for two. Go on. Tell me. So changed that... That we shall share this doll's house as equals 
and as a home. That here our lives together shall become a true marriage and communion. Then we shall know whether this has been the end or the beginning. Goodbye, my Torva. I am leaving. Nora! <laughs> When married couples do not have a true marriage partnership, then secrecy and misunderstanding usually result. For example, in tonight's play, the marriage of Nora and Torvald was doomed to failure as long as they didn't recognize each other as equals, as long as they failed to give each other the real respect of mutual confidence. Unfortunately, too many husbands and wives today fail to give each other this confidence. Because of this, they feel that their partners do not understand them or need them. And from this lack of understanding, there often grows the tragic ending of divorce or separation. There's little doubt that most couples who are perplexed with the difficulty of finding happiness need guidance and sympathetic counsel, such as an experienced clergyman can give them. They must learn again and return again to the Christian foundation of marriage. For a couple who truly follow the promises of the Christian marriage ceremony will find their way past many of the daily frustrations and misunderstandings to a real and abiding happiness. If you are not already a member of some church, you owe it to your own happiness and the happiness of your family to learn how much church membership and the friendship of a clergyman can mean. Of course, you're always welcome at your nearest Episcopal church, and its clergyman will be happy to meet you, happy to tell you more about the Episcopal church, what it stands for, and how it offers you a faith to live by. For the foundation of all real human happiness is to be found in the true Christian life of the church. Why don't you decide right now, you and your family, to visit your nearest Episcopal church this Sunday morning? This is Walter Hamden. I want to thank our cast, and especially you, Ingrid Bergman, and Brian O'Hearn, for a memorable performance. Music on tonight's transcribed program was composed and conducted by Nathan Crowell. Our program next week will be The Lady with the Lamp, starring Miss Madeline Carroll. We're especially anxious to have you join us next week because The Lady with the Lamp, which will be heard just before the beginning of Lent, will end this first series of Great Plays broadcasts. We thank each of you for joining us during these broadcasts, and we thank you for your many heartwarming notes and letters. Now, as we look forward to next fall, we should particularly like to know which programs you have most enjoyed and which great plays you would like to hear presented in the future. Just address great scenes from great plays in care of the station to which you are listening. Ingrid Bergman is currently starring in the Technicolor film Joan of Arc. Now an invitation from the church. If you are already a member of some church and have not been attending services regularly, we urge you to return to your church this Sunday. If you are not a member of any church, you will always be welcome at your nearest Episcopal church, where you too may learn the true Christian faith, which is the foundation of all real living happiness. <laughs>